Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I wanna thank you all for stopping by. Now in today's video, we are doing another thrift to treasure and it is all going to be around fall items. So I am prepping and preparing for Cranberry Fest, which is the first weekend of October. It's being held in Eagle River, Wisconsin. I do a ton of handcrafted items. I also pick items and I upcycle them. And basically they are handcrafted then by me. I bring those along. And that is what we are doing in today's video. So if you haven't been to my channel before, what you're gonna find is a lot of DIYs, thrift hauls, thrift flips. I like to bring you along like a day in the life of a small business owner. Uh, so I bring you with me when I go to shows or do different picking adventures. And I just really like to show you what a small business goes through. So if that is the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. So every Monday and Friday, when I upload a video, you'll be notified. And I'm also on other socials. So go ahead, follow me on my other socials. I'm putting out a lot more content over there. I am going live every Monday and Wednesday over on my other socials. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to hear what y'all think. For project one, I found this little crate at the local Goodwill. I paid $3.99 for it, and I'm thinking it may have been half price. I really try to keep my smalls uh, at a pretty inexpensive cost, um, so I'm assuming I probably paid half price for it. So I always try to take off the tags right away, and my vision for this is I found recently at at the dollar store uh, these faux metal tiles and we are going to use those to transform this little crate. If you've been watching my lives, I recently used these in my 30 pane window transformation and I knew right away that I wanted to use it on this little crate. So what I decided to do was take uh, scissors and cut it into four and I'm going to use one of these on each side. Initially I was going to use one on all four sides but I thought that would be too much so I decided to use one on the front and then one on the back and go from there. So what I'm going to do is just set it down. I am going to trace out the actual crate so I can get it as close to size as possible. So now that I have it all cut out, I am using Summer Crush by DIY. And this is like one of my favorite fall colors. I know I've been saying that for the, about the last week, but I have been seriously obsessed with this orange. It is perfect. It's not too bright. It's just the perfect orange uh, for like a pumpkin orange, I guess is a good way to put it. So I'm applying two coats of the paint to each of these. I'm letting it dry very thoroughly. And then we're going to come back and we're going to see Seal it with Big Top by DIY. And when I apply this, I just like to apply one nice even coat to the entire piece. Anytime you're using DIY paint, if you do not seal it, you can reactivate it uh, with water. And this is great, especially if you are trying to blend or do a wet distressing, um, but I always just recommend sealing it really thoroughly with one even coat. Now that that's dry, what we're going to use is E6000 and I'm at the very end of my tube. I take my tubes and I try to roll it and try to get as much out as possible and I'm going to just apply a real nice uh, even coat probably on all the areas that are raised. So on the corners, in the center, down the middle, and then I'm going to apply it to the actual crate and once I put it on the crate what I'm going to do is just take my hand and very just make sure that all of that E6000 glue really adheres to that little crate. 
So one thing that I noticed was I did not realize that on the edges, you can slightly see the back of those full metal tiles. And it was white. And I did not like that. And it was probably virtually impossible to get that backing now. So in the future, I would recommend doing the backside just on the edges if you were going to just do the one side like I did. Uh, but because of that, I decided I was going to paint the entire crate now orange. And actually, I do really like it like this. So I think it turned out really good having it all one color. I thought it looked kind of cool at first just having the front and the back of the actual crate with that tile orange. But um, in the end, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Then the last step here is just to apply again more big top to the entire piece to seal it and then it is all set to go. For project two, I have a bunch of little baskets uh, that I want to just upcycle and transform with a little paint. So I'm breaking out the Summer Crush again and very easily I am just taking paint and applying it to all the like the, both the top and the bottom edges and then on that center piece and just adding this little pop of color really transforms this basket. Then I'm going to apply Big Top to seal the entire piece. And again, this is just such an easy way to just change up the look of your basket and make it coordinate with any of your vignettes. So I at Cranberry Fest, I do plan on having um, like an area of my booth just dedicated to fall and doing all the oranges. I'm also going to do, um, I, I think I like blues for fall as well. So I'm going to have another whole area for that. And I am going to bring you along and show you that in a future video. For project three, I found this like wood platter and I have been taking these and using DIY paint to transform them. Uh, at Antique Acres, I had several of these that I painted with White Swan and today we are going to paint this one with Summer Crush. So anytime I am doing a bunch of thrift flips, I try to pick colors that are all coordinating so that I can just take all five items or all six items and put them in a vignette and that way they all go together. So now that I have two coats of Summer Crush on here, what I'm going to do is go ahead, take a wet rig, and we are going to wet distress this. And I just take it and I rub it along several of the edges. I just want some of that wood to show through. I also rub on the inside of the platter to make it look aged and worn. And after that, I am going to let this dry very thoroughly and we're going to come back and again Again, seal it. So now that it's dry, we're using Big Top again. We're going to do a, just a nice even coat on both sides to seal it and then let this dry very thoroughly and it's a finished product.
For project four, I plan on bringing quite a few signs to Cranberry Fest, and I had a bunch of boards that I had cut, uh, pre-cut a while ago. So uh, today we are taking one of those boards, and they are 12 by 12, and we are going to paint them with white swan and just one nice even coat uh, to both sides and the edge. And then what I'm going to do after it's completely dry, I'm going to go back and take my hand sander and just rough it up and distress it uh, just randomly all over. I like to just make this, you know, right around the edges and just make it look old and worn. So here is the what it looks like after I have sanded it. Now I'm going to apply Big Top to seal the whole entire piece, let it dry, and then we're going to come back and create this beautiful sign. So I knew that for Cranberry Fest, I wanted to create a bunch of fall signs and I found this pack of stencils on Amazon and you get quite a few in this pack and I loved every single one of them. So I'm going to show you all the ones that come in this pack and you're going to see that you're going to love them as well. If you are interested in this pack, I will have it linked in the description below, but honestly, I think that I could create just a ton of fun signs with this pack. I am going to use the one that says Happy Harvest with the leaf for today's sign. I'm going to let you take a look at all of these and then we're going to get started. So I am going to use Summer Crush and I do have my stencil brush. The nice thing about DIY paint, it is like nice and thick. So I, I do, um, you know, I try not to overload my stencil brush and I just dab as you would um, with any type of stenciling. And because DIY paint is thicker, you don't get a, any of that running. So you get a really nice, crisp, clean image. I absolutely love how this turned out. And again, I am going to be making quite a few signs with this pack of stencils. So what do you guys think? I love it, but we're not finished. We are going to clear coat it with Big Top to seal in the Summer Crush, and then we are going to add a border. And right away, I thought I want to create a bunch of signs um, and have a really cool wood border to make them all pop. So I cut a bunch of one by twos and what we're going to do is take my brad nailer and we are going to uh, put three brad nails on each side to secure the top and the bottom after that then we are going to apply the sides so i hold it just nice and secure and i apply one on the end one in the middle and one on the other end and i do that to all both sides then i put on the sides um, and it goes together so quick and it creates such a finished product For project five, this is the rolling pin that I picked up a while ago. And actually I just showed you in the previous clip what the finished product looks like. I love it though. Uh, anytime I get a rolling pin that does not have a lot of color, I love just very simply painting the handles and distressing them back like they're old and worn and have been used a trillion times for rolling out cookie dough. So I am using Gypsy Green and I think this is the perfect green for this rolling pin. So now that it's dry, I just take my wet rig and I wet distress the handles just to mimic the years of use on these handles. 
Now I'm going and sealing it with Big Top. And again, I just apply one even coat to the entire piece, let it dry very thoroughly, and you have a transformed rolling pin. For project six, I have these old fence boards. And if you've been following along, you will know that I have quite a few of these to get rid of. I plan on making some other signs as well for Cranberry Fest, but I have a bunch of little pieces left over and I love using every piece of scrap that I can. So I'm taking Gypsy Green and Summer Crush and I am just applying a real like light layer to each of them. I want them to look real shabby and like they've been worn and used and abused. So I'll do that and then I'm going to go back and we are going to apply just a real nice even coat of Big Top to each of these. And I want to let these dry very thoroughly and then I'm going to take you along and show you how easy it is to mass produce a simple sign. I love using the set of stamps from IOD called Typesetting, and all the products that I'm showcasing today can be found on my website if you do would like to order any of them. Um, but the Typesetting set of stamps is by far one of my favorite fonts, and the reason that is is because it comes with uppercase, lowercase, and numbers. So I am just going to have a bunch of signs set about in my booth that say fall and I just lay out the set of stamps how I want them pick them up with uh, the backing I'm using black ink so initially I wanted to use black and then I quickly thought it didn't show up well enough um, today in Wisconsin we are getting a lot of rain uh, and it's real dark and so long story short I did one sign with black and then I changed changed my mind and we de I decided I was going to use white. So here I'm using Mixing White and you guys, what one do you like best? Do you like the dark or do you like the white? So I went with white on all of them. I think what in the end what I've decided I'm going to possibly do is a bunch of signs with white writing and then a bunch of signs with the black writing. I think having either or. Um, so in the comments, let me know which one you guys like better, the white or the black. So a couple things to note is because I only have one L, I do have it spaced out where I'm going to stamp every all the signs with the FA, a space, and then an L. And then we're going to go back and we are going to stamp afterwards just the single L in all the open spaces. Uh, when you're also applying the set of stamps um, with the ink, I just recommend lining up uh, the corner. So what I do is I basically line up my corner um, backing sheet with the corner of the sign. So I know that I'm nice and even just like that. And then I lay it down and I hold it very firmly. I don't want the letters to move and smudge. Um, so I'm always trying to make sure that I hold it firmly in place. And then I rub over each of the letters just to have a real Really nice clean image. So now I'm going back with the letter L and I'm gonna stamp each of the signs with the L and it goes this is just a like go so quick I just go right down the line one by one and now I have a bunch of signs. The one thing I think I'm going to do to these is possibly drill a hole in each like the top two corners and just add some metal wiring that way um, some of them could be um, hanging off of like a hook or you know uh, you know hanging off of a shelf versus being a, a, a shelf sitter. So what was your favorite item today? 
Uh, honestly, my favorite is this little crate. It's so simple, but I love how it's so changed up just by adding those faux metal tiles. And there's so many possibilities with those. So you definitely are gonna to want to continue to follow me uh, as I transform a bunch of items with these because I'm definitely gonna do that. Uh, for Monday's video, not quite sure yet because I have a haul that I wanna show you guys. You guys are gonna be as excited as I was when I was picking this stuff. I also have a bunch more items that I need to flip. And uh, so it's gonna be one or the other. I am staying home this weekend, I'm not heading north, and I am just gonna be tackling a bunch of projects. I really need to buckle down uh, to get ready for Cranberry Fest. So that is going to be a future video as well where I bring you along and show you how I set it up. Um, I'm gonna try to have more footage the day of. It just gets so crazy busy that it's very hard to videotape as I'm checking people out, restaging my booth, um, running to the trailer, pulling out more items to restock. It just, it's, it's absolutely insane crazy. It is definitely one of the best shows that I attend. And if you have the opportunity to get up to Eagle River uh, for Cranberry Fest, you guys, I would highly recommend it. So you have a wonderful weekend. We will see you Monday. And I will also be back on my Facebook channel as well, going live at 6 on Monday. So you have yourselves a great weekend and we'll see you then. Bye.